Hi, right, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'm going to discuss how I built this gaming table. Um, it's got storage underneath. It's kind of a pedestal-style table. And did it all for about $200 with very limited um, uh, tools that you would need at home. Mainly just a uh, drill, a cordless drill with a drill bit and um, screwdriver bit. Uh, but all the parts and everything came to about, uh, like I said, right around $200. Um, when we first um, moved to our previous house, uh, and just as I was starting to get into you know, expanding my gaming area, um, I went to Goodwill and I bought a dining room table, which I think you've seen before. Um, and it had two leaves. It came with six chairs, which I did not need, so I immediately... Uh, redonated those as soon as I bought them. I just carried them out the door and took them right to the donation uh, section. Uh, but I took the table home and went through a variety of tabletops, things like that. Ended up uh, putting it up on uh, um, uh, bunk bed risers. Uh, not bunk bed risers, but bed risers like a college student would use to lift their bed, give them a little more storage underneath. Uh, and I ended up on that, which put it at a good height to use uh, counter height uh, stools and instead of you know regular table chairs these are these are counter height not not bar stool height which are for high top tables but the medium ones that you could use to sit at a kitchen island or something like that so that was great and it served me for about uh, six seven years and I was just getting a little a little frustrated with uh, the lack of storage. Uh, it seemed like this big open void underneath it, you know, because it's a table. Um, and when storage is always uh, at a peak. So my wife actually did this similar thing. We did it in her sewing room. She has a craft sewing room. And we did her the same project originally. And that's where I started kind of getting envious about it. It's like, eh, how could I use that? But hers is down a little bit lower for, uh, you know, at the normal height. Um, but mine, I wanted you know, a little bit taller so I could walk up to it and stand, or I could I could sit on the stool or whatever. So uh, it's really simple. Um, uh, you start with these uh, um, from Walmart. You can order them online. Uh, the Better Homes and Gardens. They're the eight cube organizer, and these are similar to the IKEA uh, Calyx system. The openings are roughly the same. Uh, from what I can tell, the quality uh, is pretty much the same the ease of build. Now on the uh, Calyx version, they are designed to sit uh, long ways on the floor. Whereas the um, uh, the Better Homes and Gardens version, their, their true design is to be stood up. And then in both cases with Ikea and the Better Homes and Gardens, you can switch them. And as long as you don't put too much weight on them, you know, they're just uh, I would say they hold slightly less weight uh, on each shelf um, uh, when you change their, their orientation. So in this case, the Better Homes and Gardens is going to sit sideways, and so you just got to be a little more ginger about what you put on the shelves. Still, you know, it's not like you can't put anything or any games on it if you wanted to, but uh, it's, just, it's being supported by the dowels that hold the shelves on instead of the shelf underneath it so uh, it's not that big a deal but so you need two of these um, units so these are going to serve as the pedestal of the table they're very easy to assemble um, these I mean they took uh, my wife got one and a couple of these actually for that for her table and we added a few more for for other storage in her craft room and uh, they, I mean they go together literally in like 30 minutes each very simple few few pieces um, and they come with all the tools you'll need and all the screws you need and everything so on. so those uh, retail for $69 each so you know like I said you need two of them so there you're up to $138 and you will then put those together um, like this and then together side by side they are going to be uh, like I said the pedestal of of the table now my goal here is to uh, not use them so much for game storage as much as for accessory storage off to the left just off the screen uh, 
I have, uh, you know, stuff like game trays, um, um, some small games, uh, you know, my round, my corner rounder, just various things are, are just stuck off to the side and they were taking up space on the regular shelves that I thought would be better served, uh, going, you know, under the table for occasional use. The other thing I did on this was I built one of them. As you can see there on the left, I left two of the, uh, horizontal shelves out and this is, the, this is the farther side. And what this does is it gives me room to put, uh, like store plexiglass for uh, war game maps and uh, shipping boxes that I need. You know, some when the uh, you get a set of priority mailboxes or things like that for trades and sales and things like that, I can just keep those vertically there under the table, out of the way because they were just kind of like just all over the place. So anyway, that's I I chose to do that. It's not not as big a deal, but in, in this is one benefit of the Better Homes and Gardens uh, version of this, is that uh, the vertical boards, in when you have it in this orientation, the boards that are vertical are actually the ones supporting the side, uh, or which in this case is the top and the bottom, so that gives a little more actually support for the tabletop. So, so once you have those together, then the rest is really pretty easy, and, and you don't actually attach anything to these shelves. That was one thing we came up with when we did my wife's was she didn't want to ruin them in case, you know, she took the table apart and she had these shelves, she didn't want holes in them where we've been drilling. Plus these are, you know, as you know, not solid wood. So uh, finding anchoring points, and there would be some, but making sure you, you know, attach them without destroying them would be a little risky. So in this case, you're not actually attaching anything permanently to the shelves. So. You can undo this whole thing. You can move and just take it apart. And uh, I think you'll see how that works in a little bit. So the next step, what I need to do was I went to, uh, in, our, in this case, I went to Home Depot. Um, Lowe's does not tend to, if I'm, the ones I've seen do not tend to cut lumber for you. Um, like they sell their trim molding in like eight foot links and you just buy a whole eight foot length of, of trim molding. So Home Depot has where you can cut your own, like you buy it by the foot. Um, and in this case, there was no trim molding per se, but uh, I'll get to that in a second. But uh, so what I did, so these shelves are 30, uh, excuse me, 57 inches long. And my old table was, uh, with the two leaves put in, was right at 83 inches, which is just an inch short of seven feet. And it was 42 inches wide. It's a very good, good size table. I wanted ideally to go to a full four by eight. Plywood comes in four by eight sheets. Uh, uh, if you're watching this in another country, I don't know what your standards are there. They, they come in the same, same there, but in, in the US they come in four by four foot by eight foot sheets. And I wanted to go the full four by eight. That's what my wife has. That's what I wanted. But I, I did back off a little bit because the uh, fabric that I have to go on top, and again, we'll get to that in that step, but it was already, it was already cut. I did not, you know, I bought it for that table. And so I went ahead and just said, you know what, I can, I can do without an extra foot of length. Um, and I'll just go ahead and have it, have that board cut down to seven feet. And that way that I don't have to rebuy the fabric since I already had that. So. Let's go ahead and say that that's probably going to cost you another 20 bucks on top of the 300 or the 200. So about 220 bucks. Um, but remember, you're not just getting a table, you're getting some storage too. So that, that helps out. So uh, the Better Homes Garden shelves are about 57 inches long. They're 15, uh, about 15 and three quarters, no, 15 and a quarter wide. So two of them together is about 30 and a half. Am I doing my math right? Yeah, 30 and a half. So what I did was I'm going to have a seven, when I end up with a four foot by seven foot tabletop, and that's what you see there leaning against the wall is the top. It's the, that's the bottom of it. I went ahead and got cabinet grade, which is a nice side. So if you're building kitchen cabinets, you'd have a nice, very, very beautiful side that you could stain or whatever. This is the bottom side that would not normally show, uh, but none of this is going to show anyway, because I'm going to cover it. Um, so you could get 
away with a little bit of cheaper plywood. And again, the prices I paid are right now during, uh, you know, during COVID and stuff, prices have gone up. Uh, we've tried to price a few things to do around the house and they're just everything, support materials, all the builders have told us have just skyrocketed. So uh, availability has been down and there's an element of a lot of people have been home uh, during, we, you know, early on when there were the lockdowns and um, people were home and they were saying, well, let's use this time to get some stuff done. And so, you know, supply and demand, you know, more people are using uh, the materials. So, so anyway, um, back to the, back to the mentions, I keep talking, um, 57 inches long, just under, uh, just under five feet. Uh, yeah, just under five feet. So I'm going to end up with a seven foot tabletop. So what I did was I had these four by fours, which are the two long thick boards you see. And these are not pressure treated. You don't want pressure treated inside your house because it's got the liquid in it, the, the, the chemical that dries out, you know, with that off gassing in your house. Uh, and you don't want that, that oozing as it dries out. It, I mean, that's what happens outdoors, you know, what happened in, in your house. So, we not use pressure tree wood, but you can. They do have what's called white wood, which just means pine um, in the 4x4s. So these were uh, $15 each, I believe, and they come 4x4 four, four four, uh, and 8 uh, feet long. So I had those. I was going to trim those down. All this lumber you see here, not the plywood, but the actual boards that I'm going to show you. Uh, as I walked into Home Depot, there was a man walking in front of me uh, with a cart. A uh, little hand hand truck, you know, like some people carry their X-wing miniatures in, like a tool chest, rolling tool chest. And he walked in as I'm gathering up all my supplies and everything, and then I go to get my lumber cut because they will cut wood for you. Um, I had that was part of my plan is is we don't have any, we don't really keep any power tools anymore since we bought our new house last year. Um, we said we're not doing we're not doing home repair. It's a, it's, a, it's a newer house, and we're just we're not doing it. So we can go get stuff and we'll just, you know, I'll take dimensions and say, I want this cut here, this cut here, this cut here. The power saw was undergoing maintenance and would be for most of the day. So I'd already, so I went ahead and got the plywood cut and then debated, should I just come back the next day? All the stuff would fit in my car. Should I, you know, the plywood I could, I had a tray that I was going to carry it on, but the rest of the stuff could fit in the back of the car with the seats folded down. I was like, okay. And I decided as I walked around and was still gathering up the rest of the supplies I was going to need, I said, you know what, I'm going to go over to the section where they allow you to cut your own um, trim molding. And I'm going to use their miter box and their saws and I'm going to cut this myself. And boy, I sat there hacking at this stuff for, uh, you know, a good 20 minutes getting four by fours cut and uh, the other lumber that you'll see. But got it all cut to the size I wanted and it worked out fine. So. Anyway, so these are these are 72 inches, so six feet, and so they're going to they're going to ride on the top, and they're going to carry the weight. Um, I don't I don't recall the actual height of these off these uh, shelving units off the floor, but I do know I needed to add the height of of the four by fours, which is of course that's the uh, raw dimensions. Uh, what you actually end up buying as you probably know, is three and a half inches. Um, so, so these are actually, this gives a three and a half inch lift to the tabletop, plus then the tabletop itself, I believe is just under three fourths of an inch. I think it's 23, 36 uh, for the, uh, for the plywood top. So it's about another inch. So I'm getting four, the, the actual surface itself is going to be uh, about four and a quarter inches above the height of the shelf, which is more than enough for the uh, for the chairs, like I was talking about, the counter height uh, stools. So six feet on the two four by fours that are six feet, and then those two extra pieces there are the two feet uh, leftovers because you don't buy by the foot; you buy the whole piece, and so you get those to carry, which is actually good because I'm going to end up using them in the center to give just uh, it was a little without reason. I was a little hesitant about the the span on the plywood, but it's actually fine. So what I'll probably do is actually pull those out um, now and use the that open that little open channel that you see there, where all the where the tape measure and the where the drill bits are, and use that to store uh, game mats and things like that. I can roll them up, just slide them under the table, and I got this little recess there. So 
anyway, not talking about that. So you got six feet there, and then we're gonna go on. And so what I did was I squared those, uh, or I flushed those to the right edge and the left edge. So basically to the front of each shelf. So basically they're the 30 and a half width um, of the of the unit. Um, and then, you know, measured them and tried to get them, you know, as centered as possible. So you got almost six feet, uh, 57 inches, and then you got 72 inches. So you've got, uh, was that a difference of about uh, 57, 72, about 15 inches. So about seven and a half inches, roughly, you know, overhang on each side, which is more than enough. That's very thick board. No will carry that weight. Um, and then I got these two pieces and I cut them at 30 and a half because you remember I said that the um, the two shelves side by side are 30 and a half inches. So now with the two four by fours riding right along the edge, then what I've done is I pre-drilled holes and I screwed that that little board and that's a three inch board. It's a one by three. And I bought one piece of that, cut to 30 and a half inches. I think, you, I think about a six foot piece, cut it down. Uh, now I think I bought an eight foot piece. I ended up with an extra long piece, but anyway. Um, and that board was probably about four bucks. And so I cut the two pieces out of that, pre-drilled them, screwed them up. And what this does is this, this, I mean, you do this on each end. And what this does is this holds those two four by fours exactly 30 and a half inches apart, outer edge to outer edge. And this serves as a cleat, as you see up against the, uh, bookcases, right? And it'll keep, we got one on each end. Now this cannot slide forward and backward. It's, it's locked in place. The weight of the boards is sitting down on top and now they can't move. They can't move front to back anymore. There it's, it's pretty much locked in place and you've built it this way, locked in place. And all you've, so far, all you've needed is a, is a drill bit and a, and some, some screws. I use your, use drywall screws and, you know, a screwdriver you know, the power screwdriver and just, you know, put a couple in on each side and that holds it in place. It's not going to go anywhere side to side. So then I cut these pieces. Now these, this is, this is one thing I, I probably should have done slightly different. Uh, these are, this is a one by six. And so then a one by six is actually three quarters of an inch thick and five and a half inches wide. And I cut these down to 18 inches. And I did that on purpose as I got a six foot board and I was able to get four of these. Now, so these ride right along the edge. And again, just pre-drill, screw them in. You want to pre-drill because you don't want to split this wood. You definitely don't want this to start to split because it can, it can do so. And, and don't get too close to the edge. You got a whole three and a half inches there to screw in. But if you notice the placement of the screws, um, they're all going into the four by four. They're none are going into the actual bookshelf. And then, so you put one on this end and I flushed it to the right. And then the one on the other side to the left, I flushed it to the left and then did the same thing on the opposite four by four, right? So then as you might've guessed, what this does is this keeps those four by fours from moving front to back or side to side. So you got the, the cleats underneath, they keep it moving in one direction and these cleats go on and they keep it moving from the other direction. So you can't go back you can't go forward. You can't go to the side can't go to the other side. So now this frame that, that you've now built on top of this is heavy enough. It stays in place. It's a durable, you know, it's thick enough. It's not going to lift up and it's now, you know, riding on top of the shelves without actually being attached to the shelves. So you do that for those on all four sides. And again, that board was probably between five and $6, you know, to get all four pieces. Again, I cut these myself, but normally they would cut them for you uh, if their power saw is working. And your hardware store, I, you know, hardware stores vary across the country, so your hardware store may, you know, do something similar. So that is that. So then, when all is said and done, this is what I ended up with. This is this frame sits on top of the shelves. Again, can't move in any direction. It's it's basically locked in place. So I could pick up this entire frame off the uh, shelves and move it if I wanted to, you know, you're relocating, uh, you could undo the screws and just, you could totally dismantle the whole thing if you wanted to, however you wanted to, it's not that big a deal. 
One thing I will say though, and it's kind of important, is get your pedestal, uh, the, which is the bookshelves, get the position for sure where you want it. It's you don't want to just start sliding this thing around. It's not you know, it's not that kind of thing. And obviously you can't lift the shelves, so you want to get it pretty much where you want it in the room. Um, and that's easy enough to do with a, uh, you know, you just cut, cut a paper template that size and lay it down and play with it. Um, I used Visio from Microsoft and it had done that when I moved into this house and laid out my shelves and my office and all my, all my stations of crafting and stuff in, in my room. Uh, so I'd already had that temp, that, uh, blueprint set aside. And so I just loaded it up again and replaced the original table that I had because I used it to position that and you know mocked up what this was going to be with the dimensions and uh, got it positioned where I wanted to so uh, another tip just make sure you have it in place as you're as you're building at this stage right here you could probably shift it around a little bit uh, easily and you you still can it's just it's not going to be quite as easy so uh, so that's the final uh, the final uh, look of the frame the, the frame that's going on top and holding it all together so, all right, so there I've positioned the tabletop on it. So again, we have a uh, six foot brace. The length of those four by fours was six foot. And then we got a seven foot table, which means lengthwise, we're only having a six inch overhang on each side. And then uh, on, the, on the narrow side, it, uh, it overhangs about, let's see, it was 57. No, no, excuse me, it was 30.5, 48, it's about nine inches. Yeah, with the other boards, with the support boards, it goes to about eight, you know, eight and a quarter inches or something like that. So I just kind of kept moving it around with the, and that's the pretty side of the of the plywood. You can see it's very smooth. And I did hit that with a sander. Now you can use a power sander, which is what I did. And you just basically kind of want to round over the corners, uh, the hard edges of the plywood. Not a lot of work. The, the This top surface is already very smooth. Um, so you don't need to do too much with that. Um, but the corners and the and the rough edges, you just kind of want to knock it down with a sander. Now you can do it with a power sander if you happen to have one, uh, or you can just use a block sander. And they sell they sell prefab block sanders. Uh, I bought some sandpaper, but uh, I really didn't. That was part of the cost I was adding in, but I really didn't need it because we actually when I got home, we actually had some sandpaper. So um, just give it you know just give it a just give it a good knockdown. Uh, smooth it out and it'll just make everything you know just feel a lot better so I did that in the garage too I did not do that in here you don't want a vacuum of a bunch of sawdust in your house if you can help it unless you go to the shop back so just centered that kind of went around with a tape measure underneath and just kept eyeballing it and checking it and eyeballing it and checking it and eyeballing it and checking it finally got it into position where it needed to be so and then to attach the tabletop to the frame, because again, we're not attaching anything to the shelves, I got these uh, L brackets, they're called corner braces. And this is the ones you actually see that I got from, from Home Depot. I was gonna put three on each side, so I had to buy two four packs of the corner braces there at two and a half inches. Um, and then um, it recommends the number six uh, size, three fourths inch screws for them but I wanted the um, one inch ones that are actually gonna go into the four by four. I did not want the one inch ones to go into the underside of the tabletop because then they would come through the top of the tabletop and we didn't want that. So the three fourths inches is plenty of room to go up and not go through because you've got the thickness of the uh, plate itself uh, that's gonna take up some of that three fourths inch. And you remember the, the tabletop itself is about three fourths inches. So, these worked out great. Um, the larger pack of screws, I can't remember what that cost. Uh, the little packs, I think 89 cents for those 12 screws. And that's the perfect number I needed because each corner brace has two holes on, the, on, the, on each edge. And so 12, times, you know, two times six is 12 for those. And I used 12 of the 100, uh, three fourths inch. I, if I'd done my math in advance, I probably, uh, well, if I'd done my math in advance, I probably could have gotten those. I actually had planned to use some other braces for something else, but it proved to not be an issue. I, was, I wanted to make sure that, like, if I put all the if I put a lot of weight on one end, you know, make sure it wasn't going to lift up or something. And ended up that's not a problem because this, there's not enough leverage with the six foot board on a 
the six foot four by fours sitting on a five foot, roughly five foot tabletop with a one foot overhang. So I mean, it's, it's basically tiered six inches, six inches, six inches, roughly, give or take. So anyway, that's what I bought. I bought two backs of those corner braces, the pack of wood screws, and the big pack of wood screws. And then just like that, I went underneath. As you can see, this one is centered. Uh, this is the first one, so the screws going into the 4x4 are 1-inch, and the screws going up up in the air are uh, uh, the three-quarter inch and I did not pre-drill for this. Um, they, go, they go pretty much straight in. So really with just holding it with one hand and, and keeping it tight in there and then putting the screws into the 4x4 first and then tightening it down to the table. It, it basically draws the table down and keeps it level. So then now I'm onto my fabric here, and this is something I had already bought. Uh, this was from Hobby Lobby, and I'll show you the, uh, the part number uh, in a minute. Um, and this is, so this fabric comes 50, I want to say 54 inches wide, maybe 56 inches wide. So my width of my table is 48 inches, so that's plenty of fabric to cover the width. So you basically just need to get enough for the length. And I had bought, I believe, 90, 90 inches and used it to cover the 83 inch tables. So and now covering the 84 inch table is going to be, you know, same thing, just fine. So, what's cool about this is it's got a very nice cloth front. That, that tan uh, cloth front is part of the fabric. And that darker brown is felt. And it is, uh, it's really nice because. Normally when you want to build a nice table surface, you'll uh, put down some what's called uh, batting. And you'll buy that and you'll put that down and that can get messy. You have to glue it down and stuff. And then you have to, to put, uh, then you put your cloth on top of your felt on top of that to make like a poker table. And that gives you just enough give that when you're going to pick up cards off the table, the, the surface gives you just enough give that you can get your kind of finger under stuff. So, so that's why poker tables are, and game tables are usually so so nice. So I uh, I like this. This is, this is probably the fourth surface that I've tried over the years. I tried a leatherette kind of thing and I tried just doing the, I made a table topper with felt and, and batting and I tried a tablecloth with uh, picnic table clips on the old table and stuff like that. And, then, and this is the this is the one I found that I just, it's, it's, it's really great because the cloth and the felt are together is one piece and then you just tack it on there and you're good to go and, and I will say you don't have to glue anything here so um, we're, gonna, we're gonna staple it down like upholstery so um, so yeah so that's uh, makes a really good service and it stays flat enough too like if you're playing a war game and you put a map down and, a, uh, and the plexiglass on top of it it'll stay flat enough it's, it's not so thick that it's kind of wobbly um, it's got too much cushion it's really got just enough cushion. It's really, really, really nice. So here it is, the information from Hobby Lobby. I saw it on their bolt there. Uh, it's called Summit Buff. It is $16.99 per yard, but of course if you get that with their, you get one piece and use the 40% off coupon that they have every week, unless it's already on sale. Uh, so you end up with whatever, 17, 34, 680, no, 40, 680 off. So you end up about $10 a yard. So this may this may set you back. You know, you get if you get three yards at ninety six, and you can build the table if you want to just be six feet. If you don't have room for a seven foot table and you want to do just six feet, or you could even just do the same design. You know, do it about five feet. You know, whatever works for you in your in your area, you can definitely do, and then you can always adjust it later. Uh, the only thing I will say is if you do the if you want to do it just the width of the uh, shelves, you'll need to add on whatever you're going to use for those cleats where I use the three inch boards. You'll need to add on at least that much to your to your four by fours. So I have to have that overhang so that you can then attach those so it doesn't move. You know, you don't get that movement side to side. So, uh, so anyway, $69.99 yard, so about $10 a yard with a coupon. And this is what, what it comes with. And like I said, it's about 54 inches wide. Um, just get one piece and for whatever all length you need, just remember to give yourself maybe two or three inches on each side for uh, adhering it to the table. And that's what I did here is, so now I'm underneath the table looking up and basically just take 
um, each of the four corners and I tacked them down with a staple gun that we have. Now that you will need, um, but they're reasonably, reasonably placed, they're not a power tool, I mean you can't get power staplers. Uh, you, you know, you might be able to rent one or a friend that has one. You cannot use a ta you know, like a desk stapler, you need a, a, a staple gun for this. Um, and I used, I can't remember what, 3 8 inch, I think 3 8 inch staples. So basically just pull each corner uh, tight around the corner and staple, put a couple of staples in it, one about where my fingers are and then one closer to the actual corner of the table. And you do all four of those first, okay? And then you're gonna bring the edges around uh, and just pull them tight, like start in the center. I started you know, in the center, staple that down and then go to the edge, staple that down, go to the edge, staple that down, and then just kind of like put a couple more staples between, split the difference, and you know, keep keeping it tight. And then do all four sides that way. So I did the shorter sides first, and then I did the longer sides. But in the end, you end up with the, uh, the table ends up, as you see here in the video, um, just really, really, you know, flush, um, sturdy, um, you lose, uh, you know, you lose foot space if you're sitting at the table because you got shelves there. But uh, I tend to put my foot on the, you know, when I'm sitting on the on the counter height stool, I tend to put my feet on the on the rungs of the stool, or you know, add, put something else next to me or something, or or whatever. I mean, you don't want to really want to start putting your, you know, your weight onto the onto the shelves, and you're gonna have stuff in there too. But uh, I will say on this one, on the ends, you get. Uh, you know, good. I mean, the chair tucks under, so I mean, you got a lot of room if you if you want to sit on the ends. You could play. You seriously, you know, the four foot by seven foot table. I can get a full game on one end and a full game on the other end, and just sit at the ends and not sit on the sides. I tend to sit on the sides though and have have it spread out, you know, long ways to my right and to the left. But um, you're totally free to do uh, obviously whatever it is you need to do. Um, so in the end. Um, I think it's about, you know, given everything, depends on what you already have. If you already have a drill or, you know, you don't know anybody can borrow one, you might have to spend money on a drill. Uh, but it's a lot better than having power tools at home and having to actually do, you know, get into really um, hefty construction. Um, uh, you know, measuring, people can make really nice tables, really nice. I'm more about function and giving myself the storage underneath uh, that I think works really well. I tend to do a lot of standing up while I play anyway, walking around or, or just kind of resting on a stool briefly kind of thing, not, uh, you know, not sitting around with other people. So it, that helps me. Uh, if you wanted to, you could get fancier and um, on the tabletop, um, you could add, uh, after you put your fabric down, you could add, actually cut some one by threes or something like that, and put a frame around the top because a lot of people like the re that you know that recessed uh, area for the game to sit, you know, kind of thing. And you know, depending on how fancy you are, you can do a lot of different stuff. But if you can do really fancy stuff, you're probably going to build something different anyway. This is more for people who need a who want a good gaming surface, who uh, may not have the ability, or live in an apartment, or you know, want something that's a little more portable. You know, when the time comes. Uh, the cool thing is, this is the tabletop is only locked in place by those uh, uh, L brackets, and you can you can you can unscrew those um, just like you would if you were taking apart a real table. You can just you know undo a few bolts and remove a tabletop from the pedestal. In this case, you can remove some drywall screws from the pedestal. Take that off. Take the that frame. Take it off separately and then move the shelves and move it somewhere else if you want to. So you've got, you, you do have those options because nothing, like I said, is attached to this. It's easy to do. It's easy to assemble. Um, and I think it turns out pretty nice. I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying it quite a bit, you know, having that, that extra area. So anyway, I hope that this has been uh, informative for you. Um, uh, I know a lot of people are always looking for stuff for you know, you know DIY and but then worry that they can't do it and let me assure you you can do this uh, as long as you've got the space and the uh, you know a few simple tools or have a buddy with those tools um, you can knock this out pretty quick I mean I, once I add all the pieces um, 
like I said, each of the shelves took about a half hour, and once I had all the pieces cut, um, you know, assembly was, you know, with the extra measuring and, you know, assuming it's going to be in the right position and stuff, it was probably about an hour to put this together. And, you know, it's, people, it's, it's not going anywhere. It's, it's pretty much in place until I want to move it. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. And uh, if you do uh, something similar to this or have done something similar to this, would love to see that in the comments. If you have any questions, do let me know. Uh, and I will uh, do my best to answer them for you. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Oh!